Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Breakfast Trades. Just dropped off my son at daycare, so today we're going to talk about motherfucking trend lines. Plenty of ways to use trend lines, you guys. Uh, I want to give you some tips on how I use them because remember, they are called trend lines. So they help you define the trend. Really just wanted to give you guys an insight into how I use trend lines and how you can use them to trade and profit off of. Let's go. All right, you guys, we're going to talk about trend lines, as I mentioned earlier. And the word trend in trend lines is important, okay? So you're going to see uptrends like this. All right, that's an uptrend. And you're gonna see downtrends like this. All right, that's a downtrend. So you're gonna have multiple uptrends and downtrends all the time on every chart. Downtrend, uptrend. All right, then you've got another downtrend, another uptrend here I can spot, all right. Uh, so this is just a very basic drawing here, but you can see here uptrend, 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 downtrend, downtrend. All right, so basically an uptrend is a series of higher lows and a downtrend is a series of lower highs. All right, fair enough. Now with trend lines, the further back you go, the more important it's gonna be. All right, so a trend line from here to here is not gonna hold as much weight as a trend line from, and let me zoom out a little bit. We'll go to like the one week chart. Uh, that's too much. There's not enough info there. All right, we'll go to one day chart. So a trend line from there isn't going to have as much weight as a trend line from all the way at the start of this. Or if you go all the way back to the history here, um, if I drew a trend line like this, all right, you can see here that it had a play here. Um, or if I delete that and just go from the history of this chart, you can see that once we broke this large historical trend line, we started from our downtrend. Now we broke out and we went to an uptrend. And now that is the uptrend line you're seeing here, All right? So pretty simple stuff there. Uh, now, I want you guys to understand that it doesn't matter which direction your uptrend goes, or it doesn't matter which direction your trend line goes, okay? Um, but you're going to have touches on them. So one touch is not gonna give you a trend line. Now, if you have two touches, you can finally draw a trend, right? And now, the more touches you get, the more likely it is to break through. So on the third, or the fourth, or the fifth touch, at some point it is going to break through. The more touches it has on this trend line, the stronger the breakout is gonna be. So if it breaks out from here, or here, it probably isn't gonna be as strong of a breakout, okay? Now, if it breaks out from the fourth one, it's gonna see a probably a stronger breakout. From a fifth touch, probably an even stronger breakout, all right? Because this is just building up steam and pressure, and then once it breaks, it's gonna be even a stronger break from that compression. So when I see a trend line with all of these touches on it, I definitely am gonna give it a higher interest, especially if it's a big historical trend line. And then, so really, if you just zoom into these charts, you can see that when your trend lines break out, right, you're gonna see that we have this trend line that is respecting as resistance. It rejects here, it rejects here, rejects here. And then now it flips above here, retests and continues higher. So that is how I would use a trend line to trade. And I always say that two closes above a trend line is going to validate it for me, all right? So we have one close here above and a second close above as well. All right, now if this closed above and then the next candle went down and closed below, that would invalidate that breakout for me and I would have no trade there, all right? Um, again, here you can see a rejection. You have to wait for the close, it's always important because while this was open, you would have seen a likely breakout here, but you can see that it actually rejected below, price went lower, and then now on the one, two, three, fourth, fifth touch, it broke through very, very strong. You see how strong that breakout was? Whereas this one only had one, two, three, four touches. Strong breakout, but it took a little bit more time to build, whereas this one really just popped through because we had so many touches here. Again, another breakout you're gonna see here. All right, so we've got a lot of touches here, a nice flip. And again, the more touches I have, the more significance I'm going to give to that trend line. Um, so trend lines don't have to be always diagonal. This is obviously a horizontal trend line and you can see here we rejected on it, rejected again. Um, we had a fake breakout here 
and we closed back below and then we eventually broke above it, um, made a new high here and then took off from there. All right, you guys, so you always have to be aware of fake outs, okay? So you can see here, I have a trend line that gets touched and touched again, and we finally have a breakout. Now, upon retest, we actually break back through it. That becomes a fake out. I call that a bull trap, and we continue down lower and much lower from there, obviously. So I always need the first close above or below a trend line to give me the trigger to say, okay, this is something I need to watch. And then the next close is going to be my confirmation. So that's how I use trend lines. Not everyone uses them the same. Um, and I prefer a retest as well, uh, because here you can see we didn't get a retest. And a lot of times if you break through a trend line and don't retest it immediately, you're going to eventually retest it. Um, you could see here that there was no immediate retest, price hovered around and it went back down and retested the trend line. Um, again, you're gonna see that here as well. We have a trend line here with a breakout and no retest. And what happens here, it's retested later on and it breaks down. So you always look for that immediate retest for me um, because that immediate retest is going to give me a lot more confirmation to say, okay, this trend line broke out. It was now retested and the market confirmed that this was an area of interest and buyers showed up on that retest and now we can continue up and we've got people that are now holding that. Whereas when you have these breakouts, you have a lot of people buying up high, you don't have people buying down low, and then as soon as price starts to fall, all those, all, all those people start selling. So for example, you can see a very strong breakout here and then a very harsh drop, but it was a quick drop immediately for a retest and we've retested this trend line now, this breakout. Uh, the bottom of this candle held, which is great. And now we continue up. So I don't really care how scary the retests are. You get a nice strong breakout. You're usually going to have a nice harsh retest. Uh, and then a continuation. And as long as that trend line holds and there's not two closes back below it, um, you're going to have that confirmation of breakout. So as soon as I had two candle closes above here, I'm going to say, all right, that's a confirmed breakout. Can I buy on a retest? And if I can buy on a retest, that's where I get my maximum risk to reward entry as well. Um, because if I'm buying up here, my stop loss is gonna be way down below, which is gonna end up being, you know, like a 15% stop loss. If I can buy down here on a retest, my stop loss is gonna be end up being less than 5%. Um, now, obviously you can use patterns for trend lines, you know, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, uh, bull flags, bull pennants, and things like that. You're gonna have falling wedges and rising wedges. Uh, the same rules for me still apply as far as the more touches, the more respect I give to that trend line, and as well as getting a retest to kind of give me some confirmation that that is a legitimate area of supporting resistance. The market has respected it, and now we can continue in the other direction. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you would please subscribe to my YouTube, also retweet this on Twitter. I'm really trying to grow my breakfast trade series and help bring education to everyone. Every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Central Time, you will get another episode of Breakfast Trades. And if you guys want more detailed, in-depth analysis and follow along with my trades, you can go to elevate-trading.com and get more of info from me on the daily. Peace.